Welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Outreach Connection. I am Sandy Axton, your host, and we are blessed to have you with us today. I would like to take us to Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. It says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Today we are going to uh, have our guest is George Osmus, and we're just really thrilled to have him here. He has begun a new program on WTJR called The Potter's Will. And he is also the founder of the Potter's Will Films. And so, George, it's just great to have you today on Outreach Connection. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate you, you asking me and, and having me here. Uh, uh, looking forward to a good time with you today. Yeah, awesome. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, fill us in a little bit about the Potter's Will uh, and how even the title of this program came about. Sure. Uh, the the title, uh, the name Potter's Wheel Films, uh, actually comes from a most unlikely source. Uh, <laughs> it comes from a Stephen King novel called The Stand. Oh, wow. And there's a character in that novel uh, called Mother Abigail, and uh, she is uh, Stephen King's idea of uh, what a Christian prophet uh, would look like. So you know, maybe not a hundred percent accurate there, but. Um, she had a line talking to uh, to another character in the book. She said, and she said to him, "You're not the potter; you're the potter's clay. Mm -hmm. And perhaps this thing will be the wheel on which you were broken." Wow. And that imagery of the <laughs> potter's wheel being mm -hmm. a tool used by the master to shape his creation really right. stuck with me. I mean, at, at the time I read that, I didn't, really, didn't even really know the Lord, uh -huh. but that imagery stuck with me so much so that when I did come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, uh, it, it struck me that that would make a, a great name for a ministry. And that was always kind of my goal was mm -hmm. you know, if, uh, to, to get into full-time ministry and that would be the name of my, of my ministry. Well, over time, you know, the Lord evolved the vision and, uh, and led me into uh, into Potter's Wheel Films. Uh, he, uh, I've always felt like my place was in entertainment, in the performing arts, uh, you know, movies and television. It, it's the only things that, aside from the Lord, that I'm really passionate about. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I really felt, felt like that was his calling for my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, so rather than go the, the not-for-profit route, um, I felt like he was leading me into the for-profit route so that I could be a Christian filmmaker in the style of, um, you know, the Kendrick brothers or, um, uh, oh my gosh, uh, his name escapes me right now, uh, the fellow who's doing The Chosen, uh, right. Dallas Jenkins. There mm -hmm. it is. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I want to make movies and television programs that preach the gospel, yes. that uh, teach biblically based life principles and encourage other believers in their faith walk. Mm -hmm. um, that is, and that's what Potter's Will Films is all about. Now mm -hmm. we're also available to, uh, to help say Christian churches or uh, other ministries uh, or, or even uh, Christian recording artists with their video digital video needs you know we can do anything awesome. from a 30 second teaser spot you know maybe you got a special guest coming in mm -hmm. and you want to throw together a 30 second spot to put it on tv or, or on youtube or whatever right to, to announce hey you know we got this guy coming in you know we can do that for you awesome uh, and or if you wanted to go you know like we say in our, like I say in my commercial, uh, you know, we're ready to handle anything from a 30 second teaser spot to a 30 minute TV show and beyond. We have plans for uh, for a full length feature film. Awesome. Um, we have, you know, th we haven't done that yet, obviously, uh -huh. but we have plans. It's on the radar. Right. Um, you know, we have ideas. We have uh, we have script ideas for uh, for television programs and, uh, and, and like I said, full-length movies. Uh, the Potter's Wheel television show 
uh, that airs Monday nights, 8.30 p.m. here on the Mighty WTJR, mm -hmm. uh, and also 12, uh, not 12.30, 11.30 Saturday nights, um, you know, tune in. Um, yeah. You know, the, the Potter's Wheel television program <laughs> is the first uh, uh, manifestation of our vision to you know, go ye into all the world and preach right, the gospel to the every gospel. creature, yeah. as you said. Awesome. That's wonderful. So give me an idea of like what your first program was of the Potter's Wheel. The pilot episode was uh, actually taken from a real life experience that I had when I was first born again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had come to the Lord fairly late in life. I was uh, like 25. Um, and up until that point, you know, I had always considered myself a Christian, but I didn't really know what it meant to be born again. I never even really heard the term. Okay. I just kind of assumed that I was a Christian because I was born in America and I wasn't Jewish. You know, right. So, so yeah. what does that leave? Well, I yeah. must be a Christian, a Christian right? right? Well, I didn't even really know what that meant mm -hmm. uh, until, you know, uh, March 8th, 1996, when, uh, when I went forward and answered an altar call at River of Life Church. Uh, back then it was over in the Emerson building. Uh, and came forward and uh, got mightily touched by God that night and, you know, born again, filled with His Spirit, and uh, life hasn't been the same since. It hasn't mm -hmm. been, a, you know, hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows, <laughs> right. but, it's not, but it hasn't been the same. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, what was the question? We were, we're talking. We need to edit that out. <laughs> we were talking about the first program that you The first program, did. that's right, yes. thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. So I, so I get born again, I get filled with the Spirit, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm thrust into this new world that I know nothing about. Right. I mean, you know, I was vaguely familiar with the New Testament, had no idea what the Old Testament was all about. Um, I tried to read, I remember reading uh, um, The Late Great Planet Earth. Uh. And, try, and, and I'm reading this thing and I'm going, what do Jews have to do with the end of the world? What do Jews have to do with Jesus? <laughs> This is nuts. This guy didn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> well, I didn't know what I was talking about. Um, but anyway, so I'm so I'm a new believer, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get my feet under me and and get oriented to to what this new life is all about. And I didn't understand any of it. And all of a sudden, I found myself thinking, uh, remembering a scene from Conan the Barbarian, 1982, John Milius, uh, starring stars Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know. Uh huh. Sure, some of the uh, the older people in the audience, like me, are familiar. Um, and it was a scene early in the movie where Conan has gone into his father's tomb and he's found this, uh, his father's sword. And at one time, it was a it was a great sword, mm -hmm. and, and you know, mighty, you know, able to do mighty things in battle. But after you know two decades in in a tomb, you know, it's covered with all kinds of ick and, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and right. cobwebs and you know, I mean it's useless mm -hmm. for its intended the purpose it was intended for is completely useless uh, you know maybe it could be used as a club but that's about it but Conan takes a sword and he begins smashing it against a rock he you know wipes all the cobwebs off wipes all the dust off mm -hmm. um, and sharpen you know he sharpens the blade and trains himself how to use it and and, and stuff like that and he, he restores the sword and, uh, and, you know, the, and this imagery just kept coming back to me, kept coming back to me. And I finally began to pray and ask the Lord, what, what are you telling me in this? And, right. he, said, and, he, and he began to explain to me, uh, the sword is you. And mm -hmm. I am Conan. And I am taking you and I am cleaning you up. And cleaning, and I have to clean, before I can use you, I have to clean off. Right. All of the debris, yes. all of the garbage, all yes. of the stuff that you have brought with you from your old life into this one. Mm -hmm. All of that has to be cleaned up. And, you know, and sometimes it's, sometimes it's going to hurt. Right, <laughs> you know? right. Um, and sometimes it's going to feel like you're being slammed against a rock. Right. And, and you're going to be, you're going to feel it when I grind those rough edges off of you and mm -hmm. put a sharp edge on you. Mm -hmm. um, but all of that is important and it's required that, that to endure all of that so mm -hmm. that I could then be used of God to fulfill his purpose for my life, which mm -hmm. should be the goal 
and is actually is the goal, whether we whether we accept it or not. That is the goal of every Christian is yes. to fulfill God's call on our life, not our own. Yes. We're not here to consume the blessings of God on our own flesh. We are here to fulfill His call. Right. And it's time we got to be about the Father's business, church. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. So in the Potter's will, uh, what is what is your vision for that? program for the television program yes um, our target audience is uh, people who don't yet know the Lord or have just come to know him okay um, you know we want to reach people who otherwise wouldn't really have uh, have much interest in learning about the Bible okay uh, we want to we want to reach people like I said, who are who are still still part of the world. Mm -hmm. We want to make the Bible and and spiritual teachings relevant mm -hmm. to uh, to that that group of people. Um, you know, we're we're looking for a connection with the lost, with the hurting, with today's generation, mm -hmm. and we want to be able to speak to them in a way that they can receive and understand, just like I did. Right. You know, the Lord spoke to me. Um, you know, he couldn't speak to me in, you know, old timey parables. He couldn't speak to me out of, mm -hmm. you know, out of the King James Elizabethan English Bible oh, right. because, you know, I mean, that's just whoosh, you know, yeah. that's over my head. I, right. You know, I don't understand that, any of that. Mm -hmm. um, but he could, he could speak to me using imagery that was, that I did understand. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did with the Conan thing. Mm -hmm. He showed me, okay. You know, you're the sword. I'm Conan. I'm Arnold, Schwar Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it, Arnold figured heavily in many of uh, the teaching moments uh, of, of God in my life, and a lot of those will be covered uh, during the Potter's Will program. Uh, okay. We'll go back and visit some of those. Uh, so, so again, you know, yeah, we're uh, we're trying to make disciples. Right. Um, and, and and not do it. In a way that's uh, that's going to be off-putting or uh, mm -hmm. or overly uh, religious, for want of a better term. Right. Um, you know, we're we're trying to bring people into the kingdom, mm -hmm. and and not just stop at making them believers, mm -hmm. because Jesus didn't say go ye and go, you know go and make believers of all the world. He mm -hmm. said go and make disciples right. of every nation. And I, if there's a failing in the American church, I feel like that's where it is. We stop at believer, mm -hmm. and you know, there's so much more. Right. That is, that's the first step. It's not the last step. Mm -hmm. There's so much more to this. There's so much more to learn. So much more to overcome. Right. Uh, so much more to being a child of God mm -hmm. than what we realize. Mm -hmm. And and that's. Uh, at, at its heart. That's what the Potter's Wheel program mm -hmm. is all about. Mm -hmm. Thinking of the Potter's Wheel, when the master takes the clay and places it upon it, and then his hands are put on it. You know, you can't help but think of, you're relating to the, uh, the new converts and the new people about how that God takes us and makes us, he changes us, forms us mm -hmm. into his image you know, and the things, it's just beautiful thinking about the potter's wheel too and the, the changes uh, that people can make, you know, what, what will come to them. And then you were speaking of discipling them and that's what's rooting them and making them uh, disciples to go forth and do the same thing. I want, I know, I need, I want to be able to witness to somebody. Mm -hmm. I want to bring them to the Lord and stuff and that's, that's really neat. That's exactly. Awesome. We we have a responsibility to pass on what what yes. we have learned to the next generation, mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily mean the next biological generation, but the next. Um, you know, I, I used to think of them as uh, as incoming freshmen. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, like yeah. I, I was the class of '96. Yeah. You know, that's uh, that's yeah. the year I that's the year I consider myself to have been born again. Now, right. Um, you know, I was exposed to Christianity uh, during my childhood. Um, you know, went to uh, vacation Bible school at Acres Chapel uh -huh. uh, out, uh, out in Plainville. Uh, so it's it's possible that uh, that I had 
received the Lord as as, uh, as Savior then and just had no have no conscious memory of it, um, and, but you know the seed was planted mm -hmm. and the harvest definitely came without beyond question beyond doubt on March eighth, nineteen ninety six. That's when you know. That, that's when I went forward and, and boy, there's a whole, we could take up, we could take up an hour with, right. with how I came to the Lord, but um, mm -hmm. that's beyond the scope of this program. Uh-huh, okay. So now you've, you've been able to, you've got four episodes. Now have we seen them yet? Or all those four, in the process? all four have aired. Okay. Um, there's a fifth episode that is ready to go up uh, Monday night and then uh, we're, we're about uh, we're about two weeks in front of it right okay. now. Uh, okay. We're a week in front of it actually right now. Uh, after tomorrow, we'll be two weeks ahead of it. I hope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot of work goes into producing a TV show, folks. If you didn't know, and there um, is. You know, not a lot of time for mm. for error. Um, so yeah, we've uh, we, we just the the most recent one was. Uh, a show on Daytona, the Daytona 500. Okay. And it, it's the, the most fun I've had on the show yet. Uh, go out to the YouTube channel, Potter's Wheel Films, and uh, look at episode four because it is, I had so much fun doing that episode. Um, and you know, you might think, well, what, what does What'd you NASCAR, do Daytona? <laughs> what, does, what does the Daytona 500, what does NASCAR have to do with the Church of Jesus Christ? Right. Well, I answer that question for you in episode four. <laughs> go look it up and you'll see there, are, there is a lot that the drivers of Daytona can teach the Church of Jesus Christ even today. Wow, wow. And, that's, and I love that of your coming, you know, from something like you did with Kona. Conan in that first one, you know, and then taking that and then comparing it to the things of God. And uh, that's neat. And it just brings it down to where you can understand it. And that's what, that's what needs to be done that's, that's too very idea. much in that way. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some other things you've kind of got maybe in the plan and sure. what um, you desire to do? Yeah. We, uh, like I said, I have uh, ideas for, um, for a, a weekly television show um, that one of the things that's missing from Christian television mm -hmm. is uh, dramas and comedies. Um, you know, almost everything on, on Christian TV is either a talk show like what we're doing or right. it's a teaching program like what we're doing with The Potter's Wheel. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I find for myself uh, I engage a lot more when there's a story being told. Right. And I understand better when there's a story being told. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I go back to the Old Testament and I'm reading the, I, I can, I can breeze through Genesis and Exodus because it's a story. Right. There are characters, there are events, there are things right. going on. Um, but then I hit Leviticus and, um, Hey, look, I found the cure for insomnia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this begat, begat, and all that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, do I really need to know how many rings were in the curtain of the temple? I mean, come on. Um, and again, I have lost track of where we're going with this. We were, Here's another edit. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just discussing some of the visions of what you've got right, that you right, want right. to come we're, up. Um, yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The other programs. Uh, so I so I have I have an idea. Uh, it, in in my head, it starts out as uh, like a two hour movie. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, if that goes over well, then we develop it into a weekly series, and uh, it, it's called Romans Road. Okay. Okay. I'm sure you're familiar uh -huh. with the evangelical tool, Romans right. Road to Salvation. Right. Um, well, I was uh, I was at work one time and I'm you know listening to uh, listening to something I don't know worship music or whatever, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was thinking about Romans Road, that evangelical tool, mm -hmm. and uh, all of a sudden the Lord said to me, "It's not plural; it's possessive." Oh. Meaning, not you know. Not mm -hmm. a, not a, uh, not the the letter to Romans plural, yeah. but a single character Roman mm -hmm. who is following a road that leads him to salvation. So the two-hour movie 
uh, is the, the main character, Roman, uh, going through the salvation process, mm -hmm. um, e examining the claims of Jesus Christ for himself mm -hmm. and deciding uh, for himself, is he man, myth, or Messiah? Is mm. he a liar? Is he a lunatic? Is he Lord? Mm. And wow. of course, obviously, you know, he, he, he yeah. comes to the correct conclusion at right. the end of the film. And then the series takes off from there and we follow Roman's journey as he continues on this road, on the road to salvation, um, as he, be, as he uh, journeys from being a believer to a disciple right. of Christ and learning, you know, how to, you know, learning, you know, what, what does it mean to be a Christian? What are God's ways? What does God expect of me? Right. You know, um, right. is, is he, is he done with me now? You know, okay, I'm a new creation. I'm, you know, I've got the Holy Ghost on the inside of me. Yeah. Is now he done? <laughs> yeah. You know, now what? Right. Right. And, you know, honestly, uh, I've had, I've had friends of mine who went to their denominational pastors and said, okay, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. He died on the cross for my sins. He was raised from the dead on the third day. Mm -hmm. Now what? And their pastor, their pastor had no answer. Mm. Mm. Yeah. We, we have to do better. Yeah. We have to do better. Yeah. We have to disciple. Yes. We do. Exactly. We have to disciple. It plays such, and, and they become established. Mm -hmm. You know, when they're discipled, they are established and they carry on, like you said, and, and make other disciples. Yep. And it's just, yeah, there has to be that. So you use then, in the Potter's Will, you use a lot of Bible teaching material. And um, so what is some of your favorite things to teach? Um, oh, well, you know, anything dealing, you know, I, I like to teach the stuff that's not taught. Okay. I like to teach the stuff that uh, that they don't tell you about in the brochures. Right. You know, um, the uh, the next uh, the next show after this one is going to actually deal with suffering. Mm. Um, and you know, I, I I feel like that you know, especially here in the West, we don't talk about suffering enough. Mm -mm. We don't talk about you know, martyrdom is part of the call, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, the, and the, re, the reality that any of us might at any time be called to, to give our lives up as martyrs for the cause is very real. We don't feel that here in, here in America because, mm -hmm. you know, we got freedom of religion and, right. and all of that. But, right. you know, in other parts of the world, you know, that's a very real thing for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at, when we pulled out of Afghanistan, you know, I heard testimonies of Afghani men who sent their wives and children off to safety, but they said, no, I'm staying here yeah. because I want to win my neighbors. Mm -hmm. I want to win my countrymen. Right. And by the way, those neighbors and those countrymen that they wanted to save mm -hmm. wanted to kill them. Right. right. They were looking to, they were looking for, to take their heads off, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. And yet these guys still wanted to stick around and put their life, lay down their life for the chance right. that they might be able to get one, one or two of their neighbors to convert. Mm. Where's that in America? Yeah. I, I, I don't think I have it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, so I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not casting stones here. I'm talking to mm -hmm. myself too. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking at the man in the mirror going, where yeah. is this in you? Right. You know? Yeah. Um, what else do uh, I do have, I, I plan a three part series on, uh, that will probably wind out, uh, be the, the final three of this season. And it's going to be on seed, time, and harvest. Um, many moons ago, the Lord showed me that all of life, everything about this physical universe that we live in, boils down to one equation. Seed plus time equals harvest. Right. You will see that everywhere. Wow. Yes. Everywhere, and and I'm really, I, I mean, that is that was such a game changer for me when it came when it came into my life mm -hmm. that I, I can't wait to delve into that and really yeah. pick it apart. And um, yeah, I mean, most of these most of these shows are uh, they're 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 contained within they're self-contained. 
You don't need to see the episodes that went before to get these. This right. is the first multi-part series that I'm planning on doing, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I can't wait to to get in there it and, sounds good. and really dig, really pick it apart and, and impart that because there's so going. much good, so much there to right, right, and that's awesome. The the thing of the harvest is what. <laughs> So that's good. So we're coming near to the end of our program for today. So do you mind praying for our listening audience today? Sure, absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you, Sandy. Mm -hmm. Father God, we come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Thank your you, only Jesus. begotten Son. Jesus, we thank you for laying down your life to make a way where there was no way for us to be reconciled to our Heavenly Father. We know, Lord, that it is because of your blood and your death, burial, and resurrection, that we have been made the righteousness of God, and we can come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. Father mm -hmm. God, I lift up, yes. Lord, every viewer Thank you. Who's, who's watching this program, who's gonna watch it uh, over the air on WTJR, who's gonna watch it through Facebook and YouTube, Father God, and through the power of the internet. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that you would touch each and every one Yes. God, that this program would be used, uh, not just this program, but every episode of this program would be used to touch your people, to encourage them in their walk, to provoke them to love and to good works, Father God. And Lord, that you would have your way in their life. Mm -hmm. Father, they would be, uh, Lord, they would sit there and they would hear, Lord, your voice speaking to them, calling them up higher, calling them out of babyhood, Lord God, uh, and calling them to graduate Lord, from milk to meat, Father, from being a hearer of the word to being a doer of the word, Lord mm -hmm. God, because that's what you've called us to be. You've called us, Lord, to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Lord, you've called us to be no more children, Lord, and but to be led by the Spirit of God and to become sons of God, because you said, Lord, that they are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray, Lord, that you have your way Lord God, in, uh, in the lives of your people, Father God, and Jesus, that you would indeed use this program to build your church yes. that the gates of hell would not prevail against it yes. in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. So make sure then the Potter's Wheel airs on Mondays. Monday, Monday nights at 8.30 and, and Saturday so. nights at 11.30. Now, I'm sure you good church folk are already in bed at 11.30, but... Uh, you know, there are, there are folks in, in the bars who aren't, and we know mm -hmm. there's at least one bar here in Quincy that is airing WTJR. Awesome. <laughs> that is We've awesome. We've heard that testimony, so <laughs> so we're, we're praying that, uh, that that word will get out there. And, the word will get there. And bring, and bring those lost souls home in Jesus' name. That's right. Touch a heart. That's what it's about. So, well, thank you, George, so much for being with us today and giving us a little insight of new things that's going to be coming and some direction that God is taking you and, and what you're going to be doing, too, for the kingdom of God. And that's awesome. Thanks for so, having me, Sandy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, Lord bless. We'll see you all the next time. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301.